Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. Today we are going to be canning up a family favorite. We're going to be canning up some ham and bean soup. This is a quick easy meal and it is super tasty and super convenient and I'm going to be putting up seven quarts of it uh, for Phil for later on this year and I wanted to bring you guys along with me for this. I'll put a link to my recipe down below how I make it okay um, but the link is going to include fresh ingredients, which is not what you're going to see here. No, because um, I don't feel like running to the store and buying something I already have on hand. Um, I am going to be using first ham hocks that I had in the freezer. But in addition to that, I'm going to be using Thrive Onions, Thrive Carrots, and Thrive Garlic. If you don't have those, don't worry about it because I will have the ingredients listed in the recipe for fresh ingredients and, and how to take care of that. We're going to be using cannellelli beans. These are so good. Yes, they are. And of course, as always, we're going to be using four jars canning lids because they are the bomb. Yes, they are. We'll talk more about those a little bit later, but we're going to get started here. You need to do a few things before you start your soup. So I will put a link to this down directly below. There's been a lot of discussion uh, over the last few months about whether or not we can put ham in with our soup because... Ham is not a meat that is approved for canning at this time because they have not tested it and they believe that any cured meat um, has a, uh, the density is different. It's a, you know, there is more density to it than, than uncured meat. And so they just haven't tested it to approve it yet. Um, but like we discovered when I did the beans a while back, um, they do approve of you putting a little bit into the beans, you know, for flavor. So... We did a little deep dive on it. I reached out to my friend Linda at Tulilu and she dove even deeper because she has some resources that I don't have living here in the state of Michigan. But um, the thing is you can add it to soups. That's the easy answer right there. Okay, <laughs> so you can add ham to soups. You cannot can um, a jar of ham because of the density issue. They just haven't done it yet. But if it's an ingredient to add flavor, then you got this. Go ahead and do it. But you're going to want to do it per the National Center for Home Food Preservation and how they have it set up to can soups. So vegetable, dried beans or peas, meat, poultry, or even seafood soups can be canned. Yes, they can. These directions are intended for use with ingredients that already have separate canning recommendations for these foods. So that being said, do they have a separate recommended canning uh, thing for the, for ham. No, they don't, but they do add it to beans. You know, it's, it's kind of like this great big game of chess. You just keep moving stuff around. Okay. So, um, we are going to make ham and bean soup. There you go. Remember that when you're canning soups, do not add noodles or pasta, rice, flour, cream, milk, or any thickening agents to home canned soups. If dried beans or peas are used, they must be fully rehydrated first. Yes, that's right. You have to rehydrate them first. Okay, so that's what I did. There's my pot of beans that I cooked up. They are good to go. And we're going to be adding some fun stuff to that. You want to select, wash, and prepare your vegetables, okay? Your meat and your seafoods as described for the specific foods in their own canning instructions. So if you're doing carrots, you want to prepare them the same way that you would prepare carrots if you were doing that, uh, just a jar of carrots. You want to prepare them the same way, and you want to prepare them the hot pack method, okay? So you want to get all of your vegetables and your beans and everything set up that way. We have done that, but we are going to be using Thrive Life because, well, it's easy, it's convenient, it's here, and I don't have to spend any more money. So let's get started. I have my ham hocks here and I put them in the uh, instant pot for a hot minute and cook them up and I'm not going to be using, okay, so I'm not going to be using the fat, you know, that just automatically goes to the side, but that beautiful piece of meat right there, that is going to end up in a jar. And so what I'm going to do is go through here and separate out the hunks of meat and put them onto my cutting mat. You want to make sure that you're not bringing any bone along. Uh, as you cut it up, I'm sure you'll find cartilage if you got any onto your cutting mat, okay? But there's some nice pieces of meat in a ham hock. It is smoked. It is delicious. 
It has amazing flavor. And the best thing to use them for is soup, in my mind. Now, cornbread. Oh, my gosh. Some ham hocks, some cornbread. Okay, I digress because I'm not doing that. I'm making soup. We're going to make some absolutely delicious, eat your heart out, ham and bean soup. The bones are still hot. Um, for Phil. Oof, there we go. And that way he has some easy meals later on in this year uh, when I won't be cooking. And if you've been with me and caught that video, you know why I'm not going to be cooking for a little bit. But that's okay. I'll still be cooking, just not for probably a week or so afterwards. Okay, so we'll cut the fat off of there. So this is what I got from the ham hock. So first you want to go through and just cut that up. Okay, you want to make sure that you didn't miss any bones or heavy cartilage or anything like that. Any big chunks of fat, I take them out. Um, we raise our own pigs here. Let's see like that. That won't stay. Okay, we raise our own pigs here. And so when we have them processed, my goal is to keep as much as I can respect that animal as much as I can and use everything possible. And the ham hocks are one of those things that a lot of people are like, well, what do I do with it? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I, I make ham and bean soup. That's what I do with it. So Phil loves ham and bean soup. It's a super simple recipe, you guys. And I haven't found anybody that's not a huge fan. So let me know in the comment section down below. What's your take on ham and bean soup? So again, I'm just going to cut this up. This is not a ton, you know, this is not a ton of meat and it's going to fill seven quart jars. This is flavor. Most of your protein is going to be coming from the beans itself. So this is a great recipe for leftover ham. If you've got ham hocks, ham hocks, um, you know, it, you don't need a ton of meat to do this and make it a good hearty meal, which is probably why it's so popular because it's actually a very frugal meal to be able to enjoy. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so now, did you check out the knife? Yeah, okay. Um, those of you who don't know, this is my favorite knife in the whole world. And there's a link down below to it if you're interested. It is absolutely fantastical. And I know some of you picked up the knife too. So if you love the knife, throw it down below. Tell everyone how much you love that knife, okay? Okay, now let's start adding stuff to the pot. In my lovely pot, I have my beans. What I did with my beans is I uh, put them in my Instant Pot for 45 minutes and cooked them up, and then I let them depressurize on their own, okay? So these beans are almost 100% rehydrated. That's okay. They will not be mushy beans. Trust me, they are not going to be mushy beans. Now, we've got about three quarts about three quarts of water in here um, and the beans okay and now we're gonna add all of that beautiful ham hock in there too we're gonna get the pieces that tried to escape there you go so when you're making a soup you need to remember that only half of the contents of the jar are going to be solids the rest of it is going to be liquid um, that is how to safely can it okay so we're gonna add just a teeny tiny bit of garlic um, I have a measurement down below, but I'm doing, you know, I'm doing the Thrive Garlic because it's handy. I have it. And then carrots. If you are using the Thrive Carrots, by the way, let me show you these. These are Thrive Carrots, you guys. Okay. They're dehydrated. They're not freeze-dried. They're dehydrated. And they're diced up perfect little carrots like you would find in, you know, commercially made chicken pot pie or something. But what you have to be careful of is that they can be very sweet. So you don't want to do a whole bunch of them. But if you're doing... Uh, fresh carrots, whole different ball game, okay? And with Phil, the carrots are kind of like, ooh, bonus. And if he wants some more carrots, we'll just empty a jar of carrots when he opens it up. But that will be enough for flavoring and to add a little color to that fantastical soup. And then I'm going to put in the Thrive Life onions. Now remember, if you're stocking up on Thrive, you guys, um, you're going to want to practice with it a little bit to learn how it works, to learn how it acts when you are cooking. So we're gonna turn up the heat here. Poof, cooking with gas. And we are gonna just heat this up for about five minutes and then we'll start spooning it into jars. If you don't have enough liquid in the pot, oh, wait, I forgot an ingredient. I forgot to add a little thyme. 
So probably like a, a half a teaspoon of thyme. And again, this is for seven quart jars. Um, but I can already tell I don't have enough liquid. So I'm going to add another quart of water to the pot. And then we'll get busy. I have my hot soup in the pot. And how I do this quite easily is to scoop it up, strain off most of the liquid, and then go about filling the jars, okay? Because I want to get that halfway point with the solids. And that's the easiest way for me to figure that. And then I will take the liquid and bring it up to an inch headspace. So that ensures that I get a little bit of everything and follows the National Center for Home Food Preservation guidelines to bring it up to uh, half solid, half liquid. Okay, let me turn down that heat. Okay, so there we have our first jar, half solid, half liquid. Poof, super simple and easy. Soup is another one of those things that's actually pretty easy. Okay, so as long as uh, the ingredients that you're putting in are safe for canning, then you can make soup. No starches, no thickeners, none of that fun stuff. Just uh, approved foods and such, okay? So you can make up your favorite soup, minus the ingredients that are not allowed for canning. And you can throw it in a jar. Why can't you make up the same stuff? Why can't you can cream of mushroom soup or cream of broccoli soup? Well, because broccoli is sulfurous and it will taste like your foot. It's terrible. What's your foot taste like? I don't know. It's just an expression. So you can't do it, okay? Because there's no safe way to can broccoli. But there are safe ways to can vegetables. There are safe ways to can chili. And as long as you're doing it based on these recommendations, then you're good. Now, chili is one of those weird ones uh, because everybody has a different chili recipe, right? And the National Center for Home Food Preservation has a chili recipe or two, but they may not necessarily be to your liking or have everything in them that you like. So take a look at the ingredients that you use. Now, when I can chili, I'm not going to lie, I can chili and I can it for the meat time so that that removes any issues. Can you use dry beans? No. Now, here's a fun fact for you, okay? If you've ever canned dry beans, number one, trust me, I did not get this waistline because I eat crappy tasting food, okay? I get this waistline because I eat good food. Um, when you can dry beans, a lot of people will notice that the liquid is completely sucked up into the beans because the beans will continue cooking during the canning process like everything else and they will absorb any of the excess liquid. So we should not see a lot of liquid loss when it comes to this soup. I'm not going to get seven jars, I don't think, which is totally cool by me too. It means I get to do it again. I have more ham hocks. Um, so when... If, if you were to do dry beans in this, it would suck up all your liquid and you would not have soup. You would have ham and bean sludge, okay? And that's not good. That's not what you want. You want soup. You want something that you can stick crackers in or whatever. Um, Phil, okay, tell me if you guys have heard about this. I need your help with this one, okay? Phil grew up with uh, ham and bean soup that had dumplings in it. Dumplings. I have never in my life heard of such a thing, but I will tell you, because I made it for him, it's good. It is good. Um, so you could actually do that with these jars of soup, too, because there's enough liquid in it that you can make dumplings, and when you heat it up, you can cook the dumplings in there. It's phenomenal. It is. This is so good. Okay, so for the last bit in here, I am going to use a slotted spoon that makes a lot of noise and I'm going to get everything and put it in here. Oh, no, I'm not. That's just more trouble than it's worth. Just tip the pot, Lisa. It is what it is. So this one may not have as much. It's going to have plenty of the solids in there, but that's okay. 
I can smell the carrots. <laughs> this smells so good that I think I even have like a teeny tiny bowl left over for Phil for lunch. Yay. Okay. Now we're going to get these cleaned up. This recipe, you see I'm scraping the bottom there. Tiny bowl of soup for Phil. Now we're going to clean the rims. It doesn't matter if you're using a funnel or not. There's going to be something on the rim. Guaranteed. So I use vinegar and a little paper towel. And I go around and I wipe down each one of the rims to make sure. Okay? You want those clean. You want that point of contact with the lid as clean as possible. Let me move that over here. There we go. I've got my canner heating up on the stove now while we get all of this prepared. So this net me five quarts of soup, which is super cool. Where's my drawer with my lids? We are going to be using four jars canning lids. As most of you know, I've used these exclusively since the beginning of the year. They asked me to try them out. I tried them out. I am beyond extremely excited. And full disclosure, I am now an affiliate of four jars canning lids. Okay. So I wouldn't bring this to you if it wasn't a really great product. It's not just lip service here. You guys know it, my reputation's on the line by saying that they're good. So I'm not going to do that. Okay. So four jars canning lids, absolutely phenomenal lids. And they have wide mouth. They have regular mouth. They have the button. Do we see the button? There's the button. I love the button. It's totally unnecessary, but I love the button. One of the best parts about this is that they are perfectly priced. Their price point is spot on. And a lot of people have been having a lot of issues lately with the standby lids that have been around forever, right? Um, with them not sealing. My failure rate with these is practically non-existent. The three fails that I've had this year were 100% my fault. It was a jar where I didn't check a, a, I didn't find a chip, you know, um, and another one, oh, just recently had a chip that I didn't catch. And then another one, I think I overfilled. So the failure rate that I've had with these, you guys, I can every single week. I can, something's going into jars at least once, probably two to three times a week. Something is going into jars to fill that pantry. I want to make sure that we are stocked up and prepared. And the best way that I know to do that is to get things in jars, get them out of the freezer, make them easy and convenient so that if anything happens to me, mine are taken care of. And if anything happens in the world, which you know right now is on fire, um, that we are taken care of. That's my number one important thing. I also want to mention, because it's a very common question, okay, now that it's in jars, how long will it last? If it is stored in optimal conditions, meaning between... 50 and 75 degrees and it's dark and it's light you know it's sorry dark it is the right temperature and you're not shaking it and moving it it's not moist you don't want anything with high humidity these foods can last in these jars for years however over time you will lose some nutritional value the standard disclaimer is 18 months. So when you see it on anything, it's 18 months. Well, that's the liability clause, okay? After 18 months, things start to lose some of their nutritional value. That's what you have to, you know, be aware of as you're moving forward. I don't can to have something on the shelf for four, five, six, seven, ten 10 years. I can to have things available for the next couple, two, three years, and to make sure that my freezer is... Okay, if the power goes out, if the grid goes down, then I need to know that I have enough jars, okay, to take everything in those freezers and fill the jars and get them canned up so that everything I have is shelf stable. That to me is very important. It is priority number one. I love shelf stable foods. I love shelf stable protein. You cannot can everything that you can find commercially canned unless you're going to invest the hundreds of thousands of dollars in that equipment in order to do it the way that they do it. As a home canner, we are restricted to a different set of rules and guidelines based on the equipment that is available for us. So that is why I say we need to follow the National Center for Home Food Preservation because personally, I'm not playing Russian roulette with my family's food. It's not gonna happen. 
Now we are going to put on the rings. Yes, we are. So you want to put the rings on finger tight. And the easiest way that I've figured out how to show you guys is two fingers right there. You want to take it to where it stops with those two fingers, okay? I'm not holding a jar. It just stops. That is what you want to do. Does it matter if your rings... See, I purposely pulled that one out just to show you guys. That is just not a great looking ring. But guess what? It doesn't need to be. It is not an engagement ring. It is a tool, period. So it doesn't need to be pretty. It needs to work. When it gets to the point where it doesn't work, then you need something to worry about, okay? Then you replace it with another one. Okay, there we go. And as the more that you practice with the finger tight, the better you get with it. If you over tighten them, that is when they buckle. So if you over tighten it, number one, uh, it doesn't allow the air in the jar, you know, anything above that inch head space to escape. And that's what you want. That's what the canning process does is it evacuates all of that excess air in addition to bringing it up to a temperature that is good for killing off any of those microorganisms. So headspace, very important, very important. If it siphons, it's not a deal breaker. It is not a preferred outcome, but it's not a deal breaker. Okay. So don't worry so much about siphoning. If you're, if it's siphoning, it may be because your temperature is fluctuating too much or it's at too high of a temperature or the jar is too full. You know, there, there really are a number of factors that play into whether or not it will siphon. But if those lids buckle, that means that you put the rings on too tight. We are putting these hot jars of soup into the water or the canner with the hot water. Okay. So you want to do that. You don't want to put the hot jars of soup into the canner with cold water because it could result in thermal shock. You want to make sure that the temperatures are somewhat near each other. Wow, those are hotter than I thought they were. Okay, so we're going to get all of those in there. Now here's the fun part, you guys. You know, if you've been with me at all, because I'm huge into canning proteins, that if we're canning proteins then there's a certain amount of time that you have to do it for, right? And if you're canning like quarts of chicken, say, then it's normally for 90 minutes, an hour and a half. But for the soup in quarts, it's 75 minutes. Why is that? That is because there is not as much solid in there, the meat is not in there, to the degree that it is if it's just a jar of meat. So the heat will penetrate everything the way that it's supposed to. The liquid in there acts as a conductor to make sure it gets through everything. It's a beautiful and fantabulous process. Here's my weird fact for the day. That popped up right away. So I've got some pressure building up in there already. That's weird. Look at that. Oh, no, it came down. Never mind. Okay. Okay, here's my fun fact for the day. The lid is on and we have the heat on high to build up that pressure in there. And when it starts venting, there's no way you cannot hear that. Even if you can't see it, you will hear it. So when it starts venting, you'll hear it, and that's when you want to take a look at it, make sure it's a steady stream. Do you have to see it? No, but you can, and I'll show you how, by using a canning lid. How do you know when it's venting a steady stream of steam? Do you hear that? Okay, that, you can hear the steam, but you can't see it, right? Okay, but if you take a lid... You put it over it, you can see the steam. You can tell. Also, on some occasions, your pop lock will come up. If liquid comes out of your pop lock, it's normal. It's normal, it will stop, okay? But that is how you know when you have a steady stream of steam. So now that we have that, I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. The timer went off. It's vented a steady stream of steam for 10 minutes. You can still hear it, okay? So now we're gonna put on the regulator. I am using the weighted regulator, which means I do not pay attention to what my gauge does. If you have the regulator that came with your canner, then you pay attention to the gauge. We'll see you in 75 minutes. That's not right either. When, <laughs> when this starts to do a hula dance, I'm going to adjust my temperature on my stove so that it's doing a slow hula dance. But when it starts its hula dance, go ahead and set your timer for 75 minutes. Adjust your heat. If it stops moving for longer than, say, 10 seconds, you're going to have to readjust again and bring it back up, okay, and start your timer again. But just very slowly turn it down until it's a nice, slow hula dance. Don't crank it down because then you're just moving 
the temperature too you know the temperature too much so just turn it down slowly but when that starts moving doing its hula dance then we set our timer my definition of a slow hula dance what are you doing what are you what are you uh, <sighs> so we've let it completely depressurize on its own it's sat here for gosh five ten minutes give or take okay always open it away from you always always and now it's time to take them out okay oh man that looks so good let me reposition the camera Oh, you guys, I'm so happy. Look at that. Okay, you saw we have the taste test of approval from Mr. Sutton, who I caught sneaking it out of the pot. I'm telling you. Okay. Now, you know me, I'm all about being prepared, right? Being on top of everything. So... With everything being the way that it is, if you can, I highly encourage you to stock up on your canning supplies now. Remember that Four Jars canning lids are a fantastic, fantastic canning lid. They are quality like I have not seen in a very, very long time, okay? Um, so if you are interested in stocking up on your canning lids, which I highly recommend, then you can do so with the link down below. And using the coupon code, you can save 10%. I appreciate it. I thank you very much. As I said, I am now an affiliate for Four Jars Canning Lids. And I would not be doing that if I did not 100% believe in this product. I believe in this product a lot. So I'm standing here talking to you, and I'm noticing that this one is not doing the uh, bubble, bubble, bubble. So I will let you know on Monday Night Live whether or not that's sealed. I don't see why it wouldn't. But, um... The rest of them are definitely bubbling and bubbling away. And you see it still has half solids, half liquid, and I don't believe it's over canned at all. Phil said the taste is spot on. I, Luckily, he can't fit his head inside the pot. That's kind of a, a bonus, right? So remember, four jars canning lids, you guys, because I want you to be stocked up and prepared. To me, that's really important. That's why we do what we do, to make sure that we have everything that we need when things get rough and I think they're going to get rougher. So right now stack it to the rafters, my friends, stick it in jars, put it in buckets, put it in mylar, do whatever you have to do to make sure that you and yours are secure for the future. Okay. Until next time, everybody, please be safe.